Good evening to all of you. You're watching Lok Sabha TV. I'm Anurag Puneta with you. China celebrating its 70 years of Communist Party rule. Uh, this is important for the China and to the world as well as China is nursing an ambition since last couple of decades to become world's number one economy and wants to establish uh, its hegemony in the region. The event was meant to extol China's journey from a poor nation uh, to being the world's uh, second largest economy. There was a huge military parade uh, to celebrate the occasion. Some approximately 15,000 troops uh, along with tanks, missiles and high-tech drones uh, paraded down the avenue of external peace uh, as Xi Jinping, President Xi Jinping and other Communist Party leaders watched from Rostrum overlooking. The state media described this as the country's biggest ever military parade. Xi Jinping delivered a speech invoking Chinese dream of national rejuvenation as his grand vision of restoring the country's to perceived past glory. But Xi Jinping also faces a clutch of challenges from U.S. trade war to months of unrest in Hong Kong. U.S. trade war, as we all know, that negotiations have been dragging on and that is causing problem to China. An African swine fever has raced through the country's pig supply and that has sent pork prices in China soaring. But the major headache is Hong Kong, where the pro-democracy protesters hit the street early, in the, early to bid to grab the spotlight from the Beijing. With a series of rallies against what they see as a erosion of their freedom rights, Hong Kong police said that they were expecting violence across the city. Police has warned it could be very, very dangerous uh, uh, to, to the people. So in the face, uh, and they're saying that in the face of the tyranny, this is their last chance to at, at least put the protest. But as Xi Jinping has declared that the no force can shake China, how uh, he wants to take China to its uh, pristine glory. And that is a dream of the Chinese uh, people. But the geopolitics of Xi Jinping's Chinese dream, what are the problems and prospects we are going to discuss in this edition of Public Forum? Before we proceed for the discussion to our guest, to our panelist, uh, let's have a look what Xi Jinping, the president of China, has said at this moment. We must adhere to the path of peaceful development, pursue a mutually beneficial strategy of opening up, and continue to push forward to create a community of shared future for mankind, together with people of all the other countries. Of our journey forward, we must adhere to the principle of peaceful reunification and one country, two system, maintain long-term prosperity and stability of Hong Kong and Macau, push for peaceful development of cross-strait relationship, until all Chinese people to continue to work hard for the complete reunification of our nation. One guest, Professor uh, Shiram Cholia, international relations expert, has joined me uh, over the Skype. A very warm welcome to the show, Mr. Cholia, uh, Professor Cholia. Uh, well, my first question is that what Xi Jinping has said that uh, no one can shake China. And um, he has also said that um, um, his nation will, uh, will move forward uh, with their stability in Hong Kong and Macau. What do you make of... Uh, Here's a statement first. My first question is this. Well, Anurag, as we know, 70 years of communist rule is a huge milestone in the history of not just of China, but of Asia and of the world. So I think Xi Jinping is using this, you know, special occasion to send, uh, you know, a re a kind of a reassurance of strength and that uh, communist rule is unshakable. And uh, despite the protests you mentioned in Hong Kong, as well as the economic slowdown because of the trade war and other reasons, 
and despite other forms of grievances across this vast country mm -hmm. uh, he wants to convey mm -hmm. uh, an image of strength and resilience and of uh, stability mm -hmm. above everything else because although they, they call themselves communists yeah. anurag today these are conservatives because they are in power and they want they don't want change mm. and xi jinping is very very um, uh, always scared of change you know anything that may lead to uh, some kind of a revolt or a rebellion or overthrow of a communist system mm. they have been studying the soviet union model for a long time mm. and uh, xi jinping often tells his cadres the communist party workers and the entire vast mm. paraphernalia of the bureaucrats the state machinery he keeps reminding them the soviets made a mistake they relaxed okay. Okay. Our political control and we paid the price for it so we should never do that so i think he's trying to convey toughness uh, in the face of a lot of challenges okay but if you go to the global media global times that is a state run uh, media uh, of of china uh, there have been many articles simon uh, from uh, from uh, what you call that uh, uh, china success story is an alternate to the western uh, style of uh, uh, the business and, and the things but uh, uh, in in his speech xi jinping also said that uh, the people of the china has to work continuously to work hard for the reunification the complete reunification and that shows somehow a very hidden message to the people uh, who are protesting in hong kong of course he means when they when xi jinping talks about reunification they he means hong kong full uh, you know absorption and also taiwan which of course right now china does not control but it believes is also an inalienable part of china mm -hmm. so this is a message uh, to the west because the western world has always supported taiwan's uh, semi autonomous uh, i mean uh, independent, semi independent status and mm -hmm. taiwan and hong kong semi autonomous status mm -hmm. so both these i think uh, the message is that china is strong today china is a superpower and you cannot stop us from you know taking back hong kong and taiwan fully mm. so i think that's a message that tough especially the communist party media the mouthpieces the propaganda system mm. is uh, you know designed in such a way to keep on hammering home this point mm. as a kind of a warning to the west to stay away because the chinese communist party even though it's very strong mm. in the mainland it feels very paranoid about these threats and rock so okay. it feels that the west is somehow trying to instigate rebellion against uh, the communist dictatorship and that it must ward them off so i think they are using this occasion 70 years of communist rule mm. to try and push back at what they see as a malign western intervention that is uh, intended to which is hostile and which they fear is meant to break up communist rule and break up china okay but this huge military parade with approximately 15000 uh, soldiers with the high end um, with the tanks missiles and high tech drones though normally many countries does this i mean uh, uh, on their national day but china's military military strength do you think uh, uh, poses some serious challenges in in uh, asia and particularly in south south china sea and other uh, uh, in the indo pacific region well surely china has risen you know it is the easily the asia's most powerful military mm -hmm. and uh, for many many uh, years they have been carrying out what is called a revolution in military affairs rma okay and under xi jinping he has also reorganized the commands earlier it used to be you know uh, air force navy and uh, army there were separate commands mm -hmm. but now he has done theater commands so for example the western command which is headquartered in chengdu mm -hmm. is supposed to take care of india and central asia mm -hmm. and some of the countries on this side and mm -hmm. then they have a eastern command they have a southern command so now they have done a lot of streamlining and they have a anti access area denial strategy which is to prevent the western forces especially the us which is has a lot of military assets in the pacific mm -hmm. from intervening so suppose uh, china grabs taiwan by force Mm -hmm. then they don't want uh, an outside power to intervene and try to stop them at least for 24 to 48 hours and after which it's a fait accompli and nobody can dislodge china okay. so they have you know invested a lot in military strategy in military hardware mm -hmm. they have uh, got anti satellite weapon capability mm -hmm. they have anti ship missiles and they have a very vast amount arsenal of anti ship missiles to counter the us aircraft carriers and the us uh, navy in the region okay. so definitely in south china sea uh, anurag the other countries cannot match china mm -hmm. you know individually even collectively the asean countries cannot match china so the only threat they see in the in that region is the us navy and their strategy has been to 
push the U.S. Navy out. The U.S. military had a first chain of command, first uh, island of defense, second line of defense, and now these chain of island, they're trying to push the military out so that you have a practical hegemony of China. They say that, you know, South China Sea, East China Sea, um, uh, Western Pacific, the entire thing is a Chinese lake. And that is what, you know, worries the world, but that is how they are pushing and asserting, saying, now we are a big power and now we should no longer be quiet and hide our strength. But how do you how do you foresee the China's what you call um, the way China China's economy is functioning at the moment? I mean, China is facing the pinch at the moment because of the trade war with the U.S. China is also facing some problem in the African uh, uh, continent. Uh, but how do you see? I mean, uh, do we have a reason to uh, to to worry somehow? Will China uh, push uh, its BRI project and will face further challenges uh, in in especially the Indian Ocean or not? How do you see that? Well, Anurag, the definitely the economy has slowed down. It is the slowest in several decades now. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of the reason, of course, has to do with the trade war and the sudden loss of the export market uh, to the US. Yeah. Uh, they are trying to sell to other countries as a substitute for that. But you know, the US consumer was the number one buyer of Chinese products. Mm -hmm. And now they are struggling to find alternative markets mm -hmm. um, which are, you know, have the purchasing power like the US consumers. Okay. So that is definitely a blow. Uh, also, I think Xi Jinping, in order to consolidate his political power, he uh, has actually brought back the state owned enterprises to the center uh, stage. Okay. Earlier, there was some uh, phase uh, under, since Deng Xiaoping until. Hu Jintao, the previous uh, Chinese president, they had a period of liberalization or reform and opening up. But under Xi Jinping, he has actually increased the strength of the state-owned enterprises that are not efficient. Mm. But he wants them fully under control. You know, he's a totalitarian and therefore he does not believe in this reform and opening up. So as a result of that, the Chinese economy is also slowing down because they have not been able to do that necessary structural and internal reforms and that's going to have an effect on the BRI as well on Iraq because okay. you know BRI are supposed to spend 500 billion or even up to 1 trillion dollars mm. mm. uh, abroad to support uh, you know infrastructure growth and corridors yeah. connectivity but if the economy is slowing down the GDP growth rate is slowing down if the if there are more riots and more uprisings and uh, these kind of uh, problems at home mm. they will not be able to really implement the Chinese dream of you know connecting the whole world under a Chinese uh, uh, hegemony. Okay. So I think the BRI project, some of them you mentioned in Africa okay. also okay. they're slowing down. Some of the loan commitments are also declining. Okay, final comment. I mean, uh, uh, when the uh, economy is slowing down and China is also facing some problem, but serious uh, problem for the Xi Jinping and the present Chinese uh, uh, dispensation is, is, is coming from Hong Kong. And police is warning the protesters are very, very, it can be very, very dangerous. So can we say that uh, Ultimately, eventually, the Chinese uh, administration is going to suppress the uh, the pro-democracy protest by by force. How do you see the entire the entire thing? Well, Xi Jinping, as you know, is a complete autocrat. He does not believe in any opposition, and that he thinks that these are all terrorists. But the fact is that the majority of the protesters in Hong Kong are peaceful and non-violent. And because Hong Kong has been embedded in the, um, you know, the Western uh, finance and the global uh, networks of transport and communication, it's not easy to do what they did in Tiananmen Square in 1989 when they killed thousands of protesters uh, through by yep. going them down on the street. So in Hong Kong, I think they will have to adopt a kind of a more patient game, what they call strategic patience. Uh, but at the same time, they are trying to divide the society between those who say, look, you know, it's enough of protests. There's been a loss of business and of economic uh, uh, prosperity. And let's just be pragmatic and get on with it. So okay. they have got the pro-China faction and they are then trying to use that to counter uh, the revolutionary faction, which is wants democracy and freedom in Hong Kong. Okay. So I think okay. Hong Kong is actually exposing the weakness of the Xi Jinping model, Anurag. Because mm -hmm. Xi Jinping model is tight control, you know, and no yeah. questions asked. But the people are saying we don't want that. We are in the 21st century. You know, this is not Xi Jinping thinks of himself as a second Mao, as a Mao Zedong. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is that in 21st century, with internet connectivity, with knowledge, and with all the integration, even many Chinese people in the mainland mm -hmm. have access. Even though the Chinese fi firewall tries to preserve them and protect them from the outside world and from uh, information blackout, still they are able to access information outside, and many of them know the reality that 
people are living freer okay china achieved a lot in 70 years of communism it That's brought right. people out of poverty it became superpower but now you know people are saying okay now we have enough to eat most of us there is hardly any absolute poverty left but now we want freedom so i think xi jinping model ultimately has limits he has crushed all the dissent all the opposition in the party he has wiped out the civil society lawyers ngos no opposition you know he is like a, a modern day emperor That's but right. still all empires fall and i think that is why you know they are re reinforcing the message of the 70th uh, anniversary you never know you know these structures look very strong but revolt may come up here and there and suddenly they their brittleness can be exposed yeah, so i think prosperity many things come i mean the money has come now the probably the with, with, the sense would come that they need the freedom they need uh, the the freedom of expression as well okay thank you very much uh, professor cholia for joining uh, us and um, uh, 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 putting your views uh, about how the china would behave uh, in coming years and uh, probably as uh, professor cholia has also said that uh, uh, hong kong and the protest in hong kong is showing uh, the weakness of the china style of um, uh, uh, authority and uh, that is a major major concern for the china